When it comes to Adobe Lightroom, everyone wants to know whether they should just use Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, but I have another idea. Use them both. In a recent video about me switching from Capture One back to Lightroom, I talked about a little hack that I had to use both of those programs to kind of mimic the idea of sessions and catalogs in Capture One, and the comment section exploded with people wanting to know what I was talking about and how I was going about it. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what I found as far as usefully using both of those programs together, as well as while we're on the way, talk about some of the advantages, disadvantages, and differences of both Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. So if you're trying to decide which one you should use, this might be helpful, and you might even find that you wanna use a little bit of both like me. So secure the cup and let's get into it. Okay, so we're kicking things off here in Adobe Lightroom, so not Lightroom Classic. And the kind of main thing here is that it deals with your photos in a bit of a different way. So previously, it was pretty much only the cloud version. So up in this top left corner, you've got all your cloud options, and this would sync between your phone if you're using the mobile app and that kind of stuff. But now they've added this local. And this is really cool because in Lightroom Classic, you have to have some kind of a catalog. So you have to be importing your photos and it keeps all of the information in this catalog. But if you go to local in regular Lightroom, you can just look through your folders the way that they're set up in either your Finder if you're on a Mac or in your Explorer if you're on a PC. I think it's called Explorer. It's been a long time since I used a PC though. Anyway, so I can see all of my different volumes over here on the left side. So this is kind of my main working SSD. And then if I go down to projects, other, and go down to February, I've got this one folder here with a bunch of photos in it. And if we were to look in Finder, I've got 2024, projects, other, photo, and then February. So that's just this folder here. So that hierarchy is exactly the same. And I didn't have to do any kind of importing or anything like that. I can go to any folder on any drive that I have plugged into my computer. I can scroll through the photos down here relatively quickly. You'll notice that there are a couple that already have edits on them. So that one's edited a little bit. This one's got some edits on it. So this is just a folder that I've done some work in Lightroom and we'll get to why that's important later. Now this organization where you're basically just looking at your local folders is kind of handy because it's really quick. So this would be more similar to how I would use sessions when I was using Capture One, like a single shoot or a single day or something like that. And you could make a session file and then it wouldn't be a part of your big main catalog. So I would go out for example, and I would have a shoot like this where I've got, let's say photos or something like that. I would throw them in Finder. I would name them all how I wanted them. And then I could just come find them here and start tweaking or doing whatever I need to. There are some downsides to the way that this organization works. For example, I can't select multiple folders at the same time and then filter within those two folders. So like, for example, in February here, I've got two different folders full of photos and I can't shift click or command click to get those both selected at the same time. And if I click on February, it doesn't show everything that's contained within that higher folder. So you can only have one folder at a time. So if you're a person who micro organizes by which camera shot, which things, and you're going out with multiple cameras, this might get a little bit weird for you. Something else organizationally that Lightroom is missing is virtual copies. And we have that in Lightroom Classic. And what that basically does is makes a virtual copy of a photo without actually having to double up on the file. So it's really just making another copy with different types of edits on it. If I did want to do that here, I could right click, go show in Finder, and then I could technically duplicate this file. It would be called copy, so I could call it something like 02. And now it's popped up as a second version of that but that's just a lot of work. Virtual copies are way easier and they don't take up any extra space on your hard drive. Another part of the organization in Lightroom that's a little bit different is something called albums. So in Lightroom Classic, we have something called collections, but here we've only got albums and they are only in the cloud version. So you can add albums here. So I've got one here called test album. And if we go back to local and I grab any of these photos and right click and I can go to add four photos to album and choose 
Reviews test album. It's gonna give you this pop-up that says these photos and all edits made to this point will be copied and synced to the cloud. New edits to previously copied photos will be saved as a version of that photo. So this starts to split off between local and cloud and I personally don't use the cloud editing or going between my computer and my phone very often. So I don't really like to mess around with this because you start to get multiple versions that you have to try and keep track of. So again, instead of collections, we've got those albums if you want to use them. Another thing that Lightroom is missing is the adjustment history. This isn't always necessary, but it can definitely be handy. And I'll show you that once we get over to Classic. And if you're a two screen user, one thing that I've noticed in Adobe Lightroom is that you have no option to have a separate screen with like a full screen version of whatever it is you're working on. It is one screen only, unless I'm missing something, but I haven't been able to find it. So leave a comment down below if you know something I don't. Okay, so that's some of the kind of pros and cons of using Lightroom. Other than that, a lot of the tools, the actual editing tools are the same across the board now. Some things that Lightroom didn't used to have that Classic did have have now made their way over into this version of Lightroom, which is really awesome. Things like the calibration panel, you just gotta make sure you go and enable it from this side here. So show color calibration from the three dots. That's really nice that we have pretty much all the same editing tools in Lightroom that we do in Classic. That used to be a big problem for people. But now that we've talked about some of the pros and cons of Lightroom itself, let's talk about that workaround that I've got for the sessions and catalogs workflow. So like I said before, I've got this folder in February that has some edits done on it. So imagine that I threw this on my hard drive and I really quickly was like really excited to get at a couple of these. So I went in, I did some edits. Maybe I even wanted to add some stars on these. Uh, it's important to note here that if you do the pick, so if you flag it as a pick, it won't actually transfer over afterwards. So if you want to flag anything, you're gonna wanna hit like one for one star. Let's say we want that one and this one there. So in Lightroom, I've done kind of a culling process. I've already done some basic edits here. And what we'll notice is that in Finder, beside all of the files, there's an XMP file, and that contains all of the metadata and the edits that we've done to that file. Whereas when we use Lightroom Classic, it keeps all of that information in the catalog file itself. So let's say that we're done using this as a session and we want to, from now on, move over into our catalog system on Lightroom Classic to be able to have some of those things like our adjustment history and our virtual copies and such. We're gonna bring in Lightroom Classic now. And what I wanna do is go to my finder. I'm gonna find one of those photos from that folder, make sure that I'm in the library mode. I'm just gonna drag one of those on there and it's going to ask me to import. So now I'm doing my normal import process. I'm gonna hit import. So now they're importing into the catalog. So on the left-hand side here, we're gonna see all of the imports that I've done into my catalog. Now, if we notice, those files that have one star on them are also one starred down here. But if we were to, let's say, filter by one star, we can see all of those one star photos. Then if we really want, we can highlight them all and hit pick and then set them all as zero stars again, if you prefer to use the flag instead of the star system. But we'll notice that we're not seeing any of the edits on these that we made in the other program. So what we're gonna do is grab all of these by hitting Command A. So we've selected everything. We're gonna right click on one of them, go down to metadata and read metadata from files. And it'll go into the folder that all of these photos are located and it'll look for those XMP sidecar files. It says this'll overwrite the metadata in the Lightroom catalog with metadata from the file. This operation is not undoable, so make sure this is what you want. We're gonna hit read, and now we can see this photo here has those edits on it. And if you wanna use your before and after, you might have to go into your adjustment history over here, right click on the import slash camera settings and hit copy history step settings to before. And what that's gonna do is make that your before. I forgot a little bit earlier, but it's also copied those one star ratings from those XMP files. So I shouldn't have done that flagging as pick beforehand. I should have waited till after I did the XMP files. So I'll do that again. So now we can take those edits that we started over in Lightroom and finish them up in Lightroom Classic. So for example, let's say with this one, I wanted to create a virtual copy of it. And now I've got two different versions of it, but there's still only one file in that folder. It's just created a second set of instructions for how it's edited. And let's say for the second virtual copy, just in case I want a little less blue. So I'm gonna bring that down. So now I've got my two different versions of it. 
And now you can see in my adjustment history, the blue saturation shift. So I can go back to when I created the virtual copy and so on and so forth. I can also add this into a collection. So I can create a new one just called test collection. And I can either include the selected photos or make new virtual copies that go into that collection. So now I've got a test collection. You can also do a bunch of other really cool things with collections like creating smart collections that will follow a set of rules and put any photos that follow those rules automatically into those collections. You can also create a collection set. So that would be like a folder to hold a bunch of different collections. So let's say you had a trip and you had a collection set, but then within each collection, you've got different days or something like that. And like I mentioned before, if we go back into our library by hitting G, I can actually go into, let's say my entire January folder, and it's gonna show me all 527 photos that are in these folders folders here that I've imported. Or I could select 300 millimeter tests and Gonzalez Bay hummingbirds at the same time by command clicking on both of them. So now it's showing me just those two. So there's so much more within the kind of organizational side of things that you can do with Classic. Now, if for some reason you want to go back into the regular Lightroom, what you can do is right click on any photo that you want to do that with, go to metadata, and hit save metadata to file. And you're gonna hit continue and it's gonna create an XMP file right next to that file if there's not one already or it'll update the one that's already there if you want it to. And then when you go back into Lightroom, that will have taken place in the photo. So anything that you've changed in Lightroom Classic will show up here. Then if we do a bunch of changing here, let's go to our color mixer and bring down the blue saturation. After we close Lightroom, we're gonna see this metadata was changed externally in Lightroom Classic. So it knows that the metadata is different and we've got the ability to overwrite the settings or import the settings from the disk. So if I wanted to keep those changes that I just made over in Lightroom, I hit import settings from disk. This is the same as hitting read like we did before and it'll import those settings. Now we've got no blue in the shot. And the nice thing is that if I go into my developed tab here. I can go into my history and I can bring it back to what it was if I want to. If I plan to go back over one more time, I can save that metadata to file and then we're good to go. So basically the way that I'm thinking of this workflow is that Lightroom is going to be for quick stuff. It's going to be kind of like my sessions were when I was over in Capture One, but then when I'm ready to, I'm going to import everything into my main catalog. Personally, I use a year by year catalog. So this is my 2024 catalog and it's nice to be able to have everything all in one place, to have it all searchable, to be able to go into multiple folders at the same time. All of those things that I talked about that are better in Lightroom Classic than over in just Lightroom, as well as some editing features and things like those virtual copies too. Now, like I showed you, you can kind of go back and forth. There's not a whole bunch of need to in my experience, but it is possible. But you have to be pretty careful because it does start to get a little bit confusing. You have to make sure that you're taking it step by step because it doesn't necessarily happen automatically. You've got to really be taking care of those XMP sidecar files. So that's a little bit about Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, as well as a little bit of a workaround if you wanted to use them both. Let me know down in the comments if this is something that you think you could get some use out of. And on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. If there's anything else you want to see in Lightroom, let me know and I'll try and make videos about it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.